Everybody, welcome back. Happy holidays. This is the Trial by Error Variety Show podcast. I'm your host, Chaz Grab, And this week, in episode number 24, we are talking to Polly Action from Austin, Texas. These guys just put out an album a couple months ago. It's called Baby's First Rock and Roll. Super good in a lot of ways. In this interview, you're going to get a little insight. Not, you know, you'll be surprised at the insight you get. There's definitely more talk of masturbation. I, I don't know if that's me. It probably is me. I, I'm, I'm not doing it more or anything. I just, maybe it's uh, subliminal messaging. It's sort of getting implanted. There's a lot of, a lot of people out there masturbating publicly, apparently. <laughs> I don't, I have nothing to speak on it. I, I will say this, Louis C.K., Regardless of, of who he's masturbated in front of, is still one of my favorite comedians. I will say that. And if you're a part of the Me Too movement and you're a liar, then you just need to know that you're setting everything back. That, you know, every little thing can't be something to prosecute. I'll just say that. That's, that's as deep as I'll go into that. I know we don't normally talk about this kind of stuff on here, but I feel like I just needed to say it. I just needed to get it out there. There's a, a talk of touring with this band. They're going to go on a two-week-long tour all over the place. I mean, freaking everywhere, dude. Brooklyn, Illinois, Louisiana. Of course, they're going to start in Austin, Texas. Why not? Maybe they'll finish in Austin, Texas, too. That'd be cool. I'd love to go see these guys. I don't know when I'll have the chance to. I just had uh, my my little baby girl. That's right. And it's no, it's not my first. It's actually my fifth. And you're going, oh. But I like being a dad, all right? Don't judge me. I'm good at it, too. Ask my kids. They'll tell you the same. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get into the music here. I'm going to start with a song, and then we're going to you know, go right into the interview. The first song I'm going to play is there's actually a music, a music video for it. It's, it's pretty funny. I encourage you to go check it out on YouTube. It is called Out of Tune. And it is on the album Baby's First Rock and Roll. You can find it on polyaction.bandcamp.com. I suggest you scoop it up or at least just follow them and put it in your playlist. Okay, everybody. Enjoy the show. Every word you sing hits a little harder 
you guys um i've been uh i've been listening to the music checking out the you know teaser videos and and i saw your uh kutx performance you got a lot of stuff going on man cool yeah go ahead and uh introduce yourselves to our listeners hello my name's ray garza and i play guitar and and write songs Ani sarmiento and i play guitar zane frisch play the bass and lolly's here too she's our manager <laughs> yeah, L- Lolly, you got a good manager. <laughs> I guess Lolly uh, c- contacted me after Utopia Fest, and she said that you guys you need a platform, a little bit more exposure. And uh, I gotta say, you guys have more exposure than most of the bands I've talked to. So that's that's definitely a credit, also, you know, to you of course, but also to your manager. So. Yay, you got a good manager. All right, so so tell me, uh, what's in store for you guys? Where have you come from? Where are you headed? I know you've, you've got uh, a great sense of humor, and uh, the, the <laughs> lyrics are, are super great, and the content's really good. So how did you guys, you know, develop yourselves? Fill me in. Well, uh, we got together in 2015, both as friends and uh, musically, which made uh, you know, playing together uh, that much easier, but uh, it's pretty kind of ordinary story of you know, a group of friends coming together and playing some songs and kind of seeing where this goes. <laughs> did y'all record this uh, the baby's first rock and roll in Austin? We did. Yeah. Uh, a good friend of ours, Evan Casper, who we've known and played with for a long time, uh, engineered it, and uh, it was very easy to work with him because uh, we've known him so long. Yeah, it was really uh, the tracking didn't take very long. It was uh, oh, how many days? Did you guys? It's like two, two to three. Two, two to three, three days. Yeah. The mixing kind of took the longest mm-hmm. part, making sure everything kind of. Well, yeah, it was like two solid days of trekking, and then it's like we went in and messed around with you know, auxiliary instruments and stuff, vocals and all that. Not too shabby. Was uh, it was any of it live, or was this all multi-track stuff? Uh, we tracked a couple of songs. Yeah, all the bass and drums were done live. Yeah. yeah. We played to like a scratch guitar track and did the bass and drums first. Yeah, and there's a couple of songs that have some pretty uh, stark uh, tempo changes or rhythm changes. And rather than kind of mess with the metronome and like piece together chunks, we just went went for it and did it live. Lucked out that it came out as good as it did. <laughs> yeah, it did. It really came out great, man. I've listened to it quite a few times. I uh, bought it on Bandcamp. I like to I like to buy the albums. I feel like that's if I can't go to your show, that's the only way I can really support you. But I'll definitely make a, a poly action show. Are you guys uh, hitting hit any festivals uh, this year, like Utopia Fest or uh, Head for the Hills, anything like that? The, uh, the next big thing for us is is we're planning our first tour. But uh, we've just been playing around Austin. We, uh, we did a little radio thing in San Marcos, actually, uh, a few days ago. It was KZ... K... KZSM. Yeah, KZS. That was pretty cool. Uh, Want to play uh, wherever we can, but no festivals, unfortunately, not yet, at least. Yeah, you guys have a, a really tight knit. I mean, from from the videos I've seen, and and um, especially the 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 KUTX one I saw, you guys have a, a really tight knit group of dudes, man. I'm I'm jealous. I could never get a band that tight. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> not, nobody. We all just hate each other. Yeah, yeah. But it is. There's just like this seeping <laughs> hate. It's really underneath. dark behind the scenes. <laughs> so we just like try to get it over with. And, uh, yeah. 
Oh, so it's not a circle jerk like I envisioned. Okay. <laughs> no, it started that way, but it quickly <laughs> turns out. Girlfriends, man. Girlfriends ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> Or boyfriends, I don't know. <clears throat> All right, this song is called Bottle of Pills off of the debut album by Polly Action called Baby's First Rock and Roll. Enjoy. <laughs> Slightest of headaches So I popped a little bottle of pills To be on my way I remember being too young to notice Just how similar I was to everyone What's your what's your favorite live show? You what's your favorite place in in Austin to play? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, uh, <laughs> They're all great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the beers are flowing. It's yeah. a good time. Uh, <laughs> I'm particularly fond of uh, Cheer Up Charlie's and uh, Hotel Vegas. Those two places are uh, a lot of fun, and there's always a good crowd around. Nice. I haven't been been to either of those. Have y'all played uh, the Empire Empire Garage? going to be playing uh for free let's see what day is that so i think it's uh we're playing with whiskey shivers uh thursday the fourth yeah so that'll, and that we're gonna, we'll be playing the garage stage which will be a first for us uh, oh, the, the big stage yeah Ooh, yeah Ooh. whiskey shivers is really cool they're really fun yeah yeah last time i was at the What's empire that? uh it was like two in the morning i thought i was walking up on like just a a street fight a couple dudes fighting and uh, I busted out my, my camera to do some, you know, hip-hop star. <laughs> what was that thing? <laughs> What's the... 
Oh yeah, world star. World star, <laughs> world star, yeah. world star, world star, hip hop star. I'm world star. <laughs> showing my age. No, uh, yeah, the world star. <laughs> And I ended up walking on like a, it was like six dudes on one guy. It was like this nasty brawl. I put my phone up and called the cops. I mean, I did put my camera up and called the cops. I felt <laughs> it was like, you know, I got all excited. I ran over. I'm like, street fight, street. And then it was just like yeah. clockwork orange. <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare. <clears throat> uh, so where, where's your tour taking you guys? And how long is it going to be? Uh, we're, uh, we're still planning it, and right now it's looking like two weeks. The idea, as it as it is now, is kind of go from Austin to Louisiana, up to North Carolina, then to Tennessee, uh, Illinois, and it, we're going to be doing a lot of curving around. But um, yeah, Illinois we'll... from Tennessee to Illinois, shit. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be one of the longer drives. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'll eventually be in Brooklyn. And then kind of make our way back down through Louisiana and back into Texas. That sounds like a blast, man. You guys are going everywhere. Yeah, we don't have a van yet, so let's hope this happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just get an Astro van. You can get an Astro van for like 600 bucks and then just, you know, ditch it when you're done. I'm going to let my future self worry about this yeah. van problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on, manager. Step it up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wally's been doing a really great job of trying to find a van. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's like you guys are making like a Z shape is what I'm picturing in my head for the tour. You yeah. Guys, you going to New Orleans? Yeah. Yeah. We got some friends, uh, Particle Devotion in New Orleans, uh, who they're actually going to be in Austin this uh, weekend releasing an album. So oh, we'll have awesome. to talk to them. <laughs> Particle Devotion? Yeah. Particle Devotion. Nice. I like that name. That's cool. Where did you come up with your name? Poly Action. So is it no. more action? Is that where you're going with that? Oh. <laughs> Uh, the, the name has, uh, it's just a random stitching of a couple of words. I was just trying when, uh, thinking about naming the band, I was keeping a list of words that I just liked, whether, uh, how they sounded or how they looked. And, uh, I was also trying to come up with something that wasn't already taken. I wanted to have something that you can just punch into the internet and it'd be the only thing that comes up and, uh, eventually arrived at poly action. Uh, doesn't really mean anything. I'm a believer that the name just becomes the band sort of becomes the name. So yeah, uh, kind of a so brand. Yeah, yeah. Now you can never change it. Nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you can start Let's side stop. projects, but can't ever change yeah. it. Are um, <clears throat> are you guys? Are you all monogamous? Are any of you poly? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm married. <laughs> okay. I'm married as well. Right on. No, any kids? No, no little ones. No. Yeah, hence the tour. Yeah, I should have known. <laughs> I got Salusa kids, man. If you have kids, you can't do a band anymore. You have to do podcasts. That's how it works. <laughs> 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 All right. This next song is called 10 Hundred Years off of the album Baby's First Rock and Roll by the band you're listening to right now, Poly Action.
tour i don't even think we ever well i guess we did we went to san antonio we never really left the area but uh, i always dreamed of going on tour and and the more i talk to bands that have been on tour they've really uh you know shit on my idea of what a tour is like <laughs> just like <laughs> how much work it takes and how little you actually are in a city or you know how little time you have to spend in a city especially you know two weeks going in the directions you guys are going it's just mostly driving and hotels or or whatever but i kind of like not being in one place for very long if i were to go on vacation i feel like i start to get antsy like get a little i don't know that's just me i think it's something that's just with me because everyone's probably just you yeah (laughs) i like staying places but (laughs) yeah the idea of traveling like you know day to day sounds fun too this will be my first tour so it should be an interesting one that actually raises a good question if there was a day that you were planning to spend two days in the city at all or not at the moment even... <laughs> yeah no yeah okay i think uh right now as as it looks it's just gonna be like bing bang, boom. Yeah. bing bang, boom. Right. bing bang, boom bing bang boom play off to the next so i like it <laughs> we'll just do a bunch of pre-workout and uh <laughs> get some <laughs> amphetamines <laughs> are y'all uh splitting the splitting the driving load Whoever's not whoever's not the the most uh, drunk or stoned gets to drive. Yeah. That's how it works. Oh, we'll be very responsible. We promise. <laughs> you don't gotta bullshit me, okay? I know. <laughs> you gotta bullshit the cops, man. You gotta save it. Self driving van. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't make. <laughs> they will. <laughs> One day. Have you guys seen the forest fires? Or yeah, in like Ventura. Have y'all seen any of that imagery? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw a video of that guy saving that rabbit. Oh, I didn't see that, but I didn't, yeah, I saw one guy like saving his Xbox. That's <laughs> 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 hilarious. <laughs> his girlfriend's in the house. Like, wait, wait for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's like trying to resuscitate it on the side. Of the <laughs> oh man. That's, it's like apocalyptic. It's horrible. I and mean, then it's snowing in Texas. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, do you know what started that? I haven't read much into it. Well, I mean, the the winds are so heavy, and there was already fires kind of all around that area. I guess they just, you know, pushed over. I mean, I don't know. There's been fires that have been going on for months and months. But uh, yeah, it hasn't been this close to to Hollywood or L.A. or, or anything. It is now. The hills are lit up. Man, yeah. There's some pretty crazy videos that it's gonna be wild to see the hollywood sign burning you know yeah it'd be very uh metaphorical for what's going on in hollywood right now <laughs> dude that's so true <laughs> that is so true yeah the veneer is officially stripped so yeah given the the current political climate has this uh, affected you guys in any way shape or form i mean has it helped you um you know, are you projecting into your lyrics, or are you just kind of like av- avoiding any of the the political muck muck when you when it comes to making your art? How involved are you as far as like your message and and the political climate? Gosh, I've never really been too much to be very vocal about politics. I'm just always afraid of saying the wrong thing, or uh, but I can't really say that it has any effect for me musically, personally. I don't know what you guys. I, I don't know. I guess just 
also it's a form of escapism, you know, to kind of not have to think about all of that for me personally right. and just kind of mm -hmm. have yeah. fun playing drums for a while. Um, <laughs> but given that we're ever, you know, had a platform, I think, you know, with a, a large enough audience, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You'll be burning any, like, Trump stand-up, cardboard stand-ups on stage or anything. Not new I, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say that. Hasn't called him? Yeah, I'm sure. Probably. Yeah. Didn't the dude from Guar die? Did I still play? I don't know. That's a different <laughs> Somebody, thing. Somebody from Guar did die. I remember that. <laughs> I, I was uh, I, I was a fan of the used. Well, I guess I I, I was a fan of the old used music, <laughs> not the uh, not the new stuff so much. It's a little poppy. But I went and saw those guys at Stubbs, and uh, they burnt a big uh, cardboard stand up of of George Bush, and like half the crowd walked out. I was really surprised, like at a used concert. Really? <laughs> yeah. I guess it's not surprising. It's Texas. Texas. Yeah. yeah, but it, you know, it's like you're still at a used concert. Like, <laughs> yeah, it just seemed. A and little... I, I guess to, to back to the political thing, like uh, I don't know if you've ever, if any of us ever had a musical person we looked up to, and then you find out that they have these, they're really outspoken on their political beliefs, and it kind of like rubs you the wrong way, and sort of changes your perspective on on well, their music. That's like, something I would like to avoid. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Walsh. Joe Walsh. That's Joe funny. Walsh. Is he like really? Yeah, he's like a uh, NRA, like Trump supporting, like uh, which I he makes such chill music. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's really surprising. <laughs> it's always really weird to me to look up to like actors, like just be really into actors, and then find out they're Scientologists. It's kind of that same thing. You're like, what? What's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah, that's me going clear. Really bum me out. <laughs> man, how do you? I mean, that's. It's just an investment. That's all it is. Like going clear is literally just putting all of your money into something, and then because you paid that much money, now you believe it. That's what I. That's what I get out of it. I don't know. I yeah. Listen, I listened to a podcast called The Last Podcast on the Left. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah, actually. And they did a really good Scientology yeah. breakdown on L. Ron Hubbard, and I was just <clears throat> mind blown. Do you guys listen to any other podcasts? Gosh, man, I can't say I do. Honestly, I listen to Harmon Town sometimes. What is it? It's called Harmon Town. It's Dan Harmon's podcast. Okay, cool. I'll have to check that out. There's a lot of really good stuff out there. I could I could recommend to you guys the Joe Rogan podcast. Of course, is like opening doors for so many people to do podcasts just by the sheer popularity of it and sort of pulling people into that platform. That's one that he just has amazing guests. And what I love about it, unlike my podcast, is they've got like three hour conversations. So you really get to sit and sort of feel like you're not sitting and talking to a celebrity or, or a band or anything like that. I mean, it really is. You're just sitting and it's just human to human, pure, pure interactions. A lot of it's live the day before. And then the day after it's, it's not edited at all. I love it. It's, it's completely. That's what you said. Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan, the guy from Fear Factor. Yeah, I, I've seen some clips of his stuff online, and it's I'm always just captivated. Whatever, whoever he's interviewing, it's just he's a really good interviewer. Same with Mark Maron. Mark Maron's also his uh, What the Fuck podcast. I have listened to a lot of interviews on there, and that's you know very candid, uh, honest interviews. It's yeah, really good. I, he's he's such a he's like hyperactive. You know, that's why I like about his style is he's he just always has yeah. a question at the end of his tongue and. He's just so giddy all the time. Yeah, he, that's another great podcast for sure. Mm -hmm. He interviewed Obama, for Christ's sake. Man, I did yeah. hear that. I heard the uh, his his Obama uh, podcast, and then he did one with his producer where they just talked about leading up to that interview. And uh, when I think I can't remember which which tour it was, but we listened to both. And yeah, awesome. Really, one of the, all the Secret Service his, rolling through the neighborhood and knocking on everybody's yeah, doors. And, first, uh, pretty crazy. How do you get that status? That's who I'm actually. I'm interviewing uh, Trump after you guys. So, oh great! Cool. Yeah, nice. we're gonna talk about his band. He's got a new a new EP coming out. <laughs> you decided to ask him on Twitter, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, no. He's a great guy. He really is. I love him. <laughs> <clears throat> it's yes, words. He's so responsive. <laughs> he is. Yeah, yeah. He and I could just talk for days i feel well i feel like if i started talking to donald trump 
I would fall asleep anyway because the dude's full of shit. But this song is called Staying Awake. It's one of the longer numbers, so, you know, if you're, if you're not driving, lay your head down and chill. And if you're driving, drive safe. <laughs> Here it is, Staying Awake.
Yeah. All right. <laughs> the commercial. Yeah. 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 That, that was that. I had to put a sponsor in there. Blue Apron. Had to do a Blue Apron blurp. Speaking of that, uh, any of you guys, how many of you do the, co- you're, you're married. Who does the cooking at home? Is this uh, what, you know, what's your role? What's your role at home? I cannot cook. <laughs> <laughs> what's the extent of what you can cook? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I just, uh, a couple, uh, an hour ago, I got some tuna, I put it in a bowl and I put some mayonnaise in there and I stirred it up. Classy. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, uh, one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I have to, uh, I have to do most of the cooking around here. I don't get to eat shit though, man. These kids. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for that that connection. I I think that's my connection. It's got to be. Well, let's just let's keep rolling with this. Are you guys? Y'all have a practice space. Do you do you rent this practice space out? Is it? Um, y'all share notorious. it with other bands. <laughs> it's the most notorious. No, we uh we have a, we we share a practice space with some other friends, and it's it's very nicely decorated. We got some red curtains. It's very homey in there, and we can go there uh, twenty four hours, which is really nice. And uh, a lot of other friends' bands play in the kind of this. It's like a it's a building with like four or five rooms that different people have access to for rehearsing, and uh, you're always running into we're always running into friends and stuff coming and going to practice. I really love it. I'm I'm so glad to have that space. You don't have to pay anything though. It's just kind of a community. Oh, we don't thing. Have to pay for it. Yeah, we rent it out. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's okay, I guess. All your stuff's safe, I guess. Yeah, I think it's really good to have, like, uh, for me, I used to live in a house with uh, a band I played in, and it was really great because we had, like, a living room where we had rehearsal uh, at our own house and whenever we want, but it just requires a lot of... <laughs> it's a different mindset when you're just able to retreat back into your bedroom at any moment during practice or walk into the kitchen to make yourself some food. For me, it's it's good to, like, leave the house and know that it's going to be from this time to this time and uh find that i I personally get a lot more done uh in that different headspace versus if i was just at home gotta get out of the house sneak in the room and get weird yeah yeah you got you got where i was going with that (laughs) (laughs) take a break you guys uh what are you are you this this obviously this is very fresh the the new album um, are you working on anything else? Yeah, we've got uh, like eight songs that um, are almost done, and uh, it's been kind of hard to not play them at shows because I wanted to avoid kind of song fatigue. Because with this first album, we've been playing these songs for three years, and uh, wanted to avoid releasing an album and then not playing those songs off the album. So we want to hold on to these new ones as long as we can when it, until it gets closer to when we're able to record them and then start to trickle them into the new set, sort of time it to where we start playing the new songs close to when the record is going to be released. That's a good idea. Yeah, they have to have their day. You know, you've been working on them for that long. You've got to give them their day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I find even like my drum parts have slightly changed since we recorded the last album anyway. I've just given more time to like finesse them before actually recording them too. Yeah, it is good to even sometimes yeah, just keep playing them over and over again so we can consider all the possibilities, if you will. Yeah, it is kinda cool to see how they like morph into something slightly different than like what we originally came up with. We'll yeah. play them differently live than what's on the album too, even just like, you know, a little bit. I think that's the part of the live show that I like <laughs> at least to see with other bands as well you know that you're still having fun with the songs yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah the uh i like the little the video you guys did with out of tune oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very that funny was fun. yeah very funny who was that was that a friend of y'all's yeah it's a good friend of ours uh, jordan hunt him and uh our friends uh, eric gatling and sean robb have this thing called playtime and they do uh short film stuff and they're really they're really funny and uh they helped us out with that uh that video playtime kind of, comedy they're on youtube <laughs> yeah, check it out. <laughs> kind of wanted to, with that video, wanted to play with uh, the format, if you will. I like the idea of it abandoning the music video idea and not even really having the whole song. <laughs> I love it. It was really funny. LOL. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, uh, you guys got any more videos coming out for this album? Uh, I want to do another one. I was actually just thinking about that the other day. One of the many things that I have to do or want to do. This endless list. 
uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get around to it. Um, but with planning tour and shows coming up, uh, we'll, we'll try to squeeze it in. <laughs> uh, I'm doing something new on this podcast. I want to give uh, an opportunity for the bands to give shout outs. So if you guys right now want to give shout outs to anybody who makes your life special or makes your life shit and you want to call them out, this is your moment. I'll, I'll give you guys a full minute to do that. All right. So shout outs. Go. Okay, uh, I want to shout out uh, to my wife, Jenna. And I'm going to start with that, and we'll, I'll, I'll throw in more. As we'll just keep going. Yanni, your turn. I'll do, I'll do my wife, Savannah. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'll shout out to my roommate, Benjamin, because I don't have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Butters. Butters the dog. Anyway. Shout out to Butters the dog. Woo! Butters the dog. Butters MVP. That's a third, yeah. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to William H. Macy. Uh, he's just a great guy. Uh, uh, the, the shameless version of William H. Macy or the Fargo version? Of William H. Macy? Oh, man. I'm so glad you used Fargo. Uh, That's yeah, an example. Fargo version all the way. I'll also give a shout out to Playtime Comedy and other bands that we uh, all take part in uh, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Uni, Bog Body. Uh, Lola tried. Those are all bands that who are, uh, everyone should check out. Times yeah. a million. Check them out. Awesome dudes. Oh, another shout to Particle Devotion or Particle, Particle Devotion. Devotion. Particle yeah. Devotion. New album coming out. Yeah, check yeah. that out too. Check it out. I got to get those guys on here. Talk about that album. They're super sweet dudes. And also, of course, our manager Lolly. Lolly. What? <laughs> It's good to have those shout outs. It really is. Those people, they'll listen one day and, you know, maybe you'll, <laughs> maybe you'll be living with a new roommate and Benny will be like, shit, I remember those days. Shout out to Benny. This song here is called KFC off of Baby's First Rock and Roll. Get it on Bandcamp, suckers. <laughs>
there was a, a couple, uh, well, there was, yeah, there's a couple mentions of some marijuana use in your album. And there's also a mention of you not getting high to find your inner self. Was that an actual practice or were those just lyrics? I'm, I'm asking because right now I'm in a period of deep sobriety <laughs> sort of forced upon me by, you know, court measures. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, oh, off no. air. but, <laughs> but uh, I do I do find that I'm I'm going deep into myself and, and it's bringing out it's kind of a bubbling self hate that I have to work on that I didn't realize I was suppressing for many many years of, of smoking pot so uh, I need to know if that's autobiographical and if so how spiritual was it for you <laughs> I am always inebriated so it was not autobiographical <laughs> <laughs> You just had a weed one day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's like that. Uh, but that song you're uh, talking about, what, the bottle of pills, that was like a stream of conscious ish type thing. It, one of those ones that sort of felt like the lyrics just kind of fell out of the air. Wasn't really too much thought put into it. But yeah, we, we all smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's illegal. <laughs> that's illegal. Fuck that, man. It's medicine. <laughs> it's medicine in 11 other states. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, where did the, uh, I'm wondering where the lyrics from uh, 10 hundred years come from. That that's, is like some, some cherry tree chopping in there. And, you know, wasn't that George Washington? Was that Abe Lincoln? Which, which I think that was Washington, right? I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, you know, same thing with that one. Uh, just kind of out of the air, huh? Yeah. It's just, uh, Lyrics for, for this album, uh, one of the last things I did, it's like I, I come up with the chord progression and melody. I just kind of keep playing it and singing it and even bringing it to the band before any lyrics are there. And just kind of uh, sometimes a line will just appear and then it's kind of a, a good place to start and then kind of build it from there. Well, you have a way with words, sir. You do. <laughs> well, thank you. Especially if you're just pulling them out of your ass like that. Yeah. And an <laughs> asshole full of words. <laughs> uh, so I need to know how you knew that KFC was sponsoring the election because I knew I didn't know anybody else knew that I know that Hillary Clinton had Popeyes on her side but I didn't know anybody else knew about the KFC conspiracy yeah that's uh with KFC and then accident of 93 uh those were big uh, moments and kind of embracing being silly uh, within the band, uh, I think did accident come first? Do you guys remember? KFC, I think it was KFC. 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 Yeah. KFC came first. Yeah, I think KFC sort of prepped uh, the yeah. getting really silly with with accident ninety three. Uh, I remember working on songs really early in the morning, and I was just kind of uh, work, was working on this other idea, and, and decided to take a break, and then. Got that goo gaga started happening, and I was just cracking myself up. It is hilarious. And it happened to uh, be the same day that we had practice, so I just showed showed it to the guys, and it just everything fell in place so so fast that it's like, oh, okay, we have to do it now. <laughs> and, I love uh, the idea of that, the accident turning him into a kind of like an accidental Benjamin Button situation. <laughs> what was the accident though? Uh, I don't know some sort of, some sort of maybe we should write a prequel cool song yeah. he, he, <laughs> drank, he drank chemicals under the sink that weren't labeled with a skull and crossbones yeah. that was the accident <clears throat> but that song ended up being one that people seem to be most responsive to and uh, it's so silly and I think that can be refreshing I, I think in a way uh, I think yeah. it's also disarming I think if we play some silly songs i think it sort of it's like we're not taking ourselves too seriously <laughs> like overly mm -hmm. serious mm -hmm. when you do play like one of the more serious songs i think it it's in a different context if we if coming from a group of dudes who just finished screaming google Goo gaga into a microphone <laughs> <laughs> yeah open with that one and then try to get people to take you serious for the rest of it yeah well, i love it man you guys uh i'm gonna wrap this up i need you to tell me where is the best place to support you guys. The best place to support us is through Bandcamp. If you want to buy the record and uh, it'll help us, uh, every dollar is going to go to planning this tour. 
Uh, I think that's the most direct line of support, I'd say. And and booking as well. Where should we get a hold of you if you want to book you? Bandcamp as well has got uh, links to every all our Facebook and SoundCloud. I mean, we're we try to be as all over every web platform as we can. Try to make it as easy for people to to find us. Um, but if you go to the uh, polyaction.bandcamp.com, it'll point you in all the directions. Perfect. <laughs> Well, excellent. You guys, it was really fun to talk to you, and uh, thanks for sitting down and, and filling me in here. I look forward to uh, hearing what's next, and I'm going to send everybody and anybody your way. Keep up Yay, the good work. Yay, thank you for having us. It was a lot of fun. Of course, man. You guys be safe out there. All right, thanks. Bye. 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 All right, before I close this podcast up, completely with some announcements and all that jazz i'm gonna play another song i'm gonna play another song after the announcements but right now i'm gonna play another song let's see i i particularly want to play i want to play the accident of 1993 because we just talked about it it's one of their uh comedic songs and it's just super funny so let's go ahead and play that one the accident of 1993 <laughs> accident of 1993 and the interview with Polly action hope you guys enjoyed this episode i sure like talking to them i would love to talk to them in the future maybe when they get a new album out or get back from tour or whenever any one of the side projects or other bands that they're involved in you guys feel more than than welcome to contact me and, and we'll try this one more time <clears throat> or 10 more times or whatever uh, let's see, let's see. I have Annabelle's chair legs on the next episode. Go find them on Bandcamp. So groovy. And they were recommended to me by the Rotten Mangoes, which are a couple episodes back. Go check out our, our back catalog of episodes. All kinds of awesome bands. MT was my first guest. He's a rapper from San Antonio. He's still doing a lot of stuff and just a really fun guy. Professor Julius. I, I want Professor Julius back on my podcast. I feel like he was he was my funniest guest so far, and uh, we have really good chemistry, so I'd love to talk to that dude again. Also, Blake from Phantom Chatter contacted me today, and they have some new music coming out, so we'll be talking to Phantom Chatter again real, t uh, real soon. They were in episode five. I'm also going to be putting together another all music episode, a couple of episodes actually. So if you, you're a band listening right now and you don't really feel like you want to do an interview, that's perfectly fine. I get it. 
but you feel like your your music is radio ready, send it my way. And I'm going to put together another hour long episode without any interviews. And I will still put you up on our website, trial by error, variety show.com. You'll still get mentions on social media whenever I get around to that kind of stuff. I'm highly active on Instagram. I feel like pictures speak to me more and, and most of the people here. Facebook is dead, everybody. It's dead. And Twitter is basically just like politics and tits. I can't tell the difference between what I'm looking at on Twitter. Maybe I'm just using it wrong. I don't know. But I'm bored with it. Instagram is still pretty captivating. I, I'm I'm probably just addicted to it, though. It's just my own addiction, guys. Don't listen to me. Go do what you want. <laughs> Stay as active as you want. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy to announce that I, I had a baby girl. Her name is Zephyr Phoenix. So, uh, I'm going to be trying my best to juggle a weekly schedule between working my full-time job and raising my uh, plethora of children and taking care of a newborn, you know, all that jazz. So if, if there is a lag in, in 2018, just forgive me. Please forgive me. I will do my best to make up for it with bonus episodes and listening parties. And I'm going to be in San Marcos on uh, New Year's Eve. I'm going to be interviewing like, I don't know. I'm going to try to interview eight bands in one day, but because there's eight bands on the bill, but sometimes they don't show up until it's their time to play. But Justin Conway of Conway in the well, Conway the well, actually invited me out to do some interviews. So thank you, Justin, if you're listening for that opportunity. I, I really appreciate it. I've shared the event on our Trial by Error Facebook page. I know I said I was on Facebook, but I did it just for him. And other than that, if you're listening to this and you haven't subscribed, one way that you could show support for all the bands is to subscribe and leave us a rating, a five-star rating. Five-star nothing less than five stars will do it it's what it's going to do is it's going to bump us up on the popularity list on itunes so when people type in like unsigned bands or local bands or interviews and anything with those those kind of keywords it's going to put us up on a list where we can actually be seen and and the more subscribers we have the more likely it is for people to find this podcast and the more likely it is for them to hear all the bands that I mentioned before. And there's just tons of great music. Every every episode is featuring one new band and their hour-long episodes. If this is your first one, uh, I, I encourage you to circle back. And if you've been listening since episode one, thank you so much. It's really cool that you've shown that that level of support and you keep coming back. I've also got a Patreon you can go to Trial by Error Variety Show, uh, type that in, and on Patreon.com. It's super fast to make an account. I mean, literally, guys, it takes a minute to make an account. You can make a donation of any size. Those donations are going to go to dis uh, distribution and possibly live shows, possibly some more merchandise, which I usually hand out for free at all the events. And it, it's basically the, the distribution part is the hardest thing. It costs $60 a month to keep this thing up. And I've got it on Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube. Um, let's see. Uh, well, Spotify won't let me play because it's not original music. iHeartRadio will. It's, it's on iTunes. It's, it's just tons of places. And, and the more support we have, the longer I can keep distributing this thing. Cause I, I have a feeling it's going to break me, but that's okay. I'm not going to stop. I will scrounge. I will. I will. No, I almost said something gross. But I, I'll do a lot, whatever I can to keep this thing going. <laughs> you guys take care of one another, please. I'm gonna end with a song called "The High Road," and I suggest you all take it. The best way to do that is follow the golden rule. What you missed and what you left behind You say you've been feeling this way Since the very start It's such a roundabout way of saying Oh
There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't wanna see There's a part of me I don't